Hello, this is Nathan Hoot. This presentation will describe a research project that our team performed to explore the relationship between ED crowding and medical errors. I'm part of the emergency medicine faculty at McGovern Medical School at UT Health in Houston, presenting this on behalf of my colleagues. I have no financial interest to declare related to this presentation. Emergency department crowding is a worldwide problem that has been found to negatively affect numerous quality measures and hinder access to health care. Prior research has examined the association between crowding and preventable adverse events or medication errors. Citations are provided at the bottom of the slide for more information. One challenge in this research, however, lies in how to define the term medical error and then how to determine the frequency of errors. Also, reasonable variations in practice between providers may lead to disagreement on what constitutes an error. For this project, we defined medical errors according to the results of adjudication by peer review from our established quality assurance process. At McGovern Medical School, the emergency medicine faculty have developed a QA process and an associated informatics solution that have become part of our safety culture. Please see the reference below for additional detail. Briefly, our quality process is owned by the Emergency Medicine Service Line and has been continuously operating since 2009. This process is based on the principles of voluntary and timely reporting with an emphasis on responding to incidents in a non-punitive manner that focuses on improving system safety. Our process exists in parallel with the quality review processes that exist at both hospitals where we provide care. It does not replace those processes. However, we believe that successful internal quality improvement has diminished the need for hospital-based review. Incidents are referred into our Medical Incident Reporting System, or MERS, by various sources, including by voluntary self-referral, by nurses or other staff members, by other service lines, and by hospital quality review. Every incident follows a standardized process for review and adjudication. Incidents from both hospitals are first reviewed by the QA committee and cases that warrant further discussion are presented at a conference where all faculty and residents are expected to attend. After considering community input, the QA committee scores each case and determines whether an error occurred. We conducted a retrospective analysis of the QA database at one of the two hospitals where we provide emergency care. This is the adult ED of an urban, academic, tertiary care referral center with level 1 trauma accreditation. The ED includes 24 beds, of which 12 are critical care beds. The annual volume is approximately 55,000 visits, with an admission rate of 35 to 40 percent. The study period was from February 2012 to December 2017. We divided the study period into 308 weeks, so each individual week became the unit of analysis for this research. We obtained ED crowding data from the electronic medical record to provide operational context for the QA database. We adopted the National Emergency Department Overcrowding Scale, or NEDOX, as the ED crowding metric for this study. This metric has been widely validated and applied, although no universal consensus exists on how to measure ED crowding. The NEDOX was developed to measure crowding at a single point in time. However, for this study, what we needed was to measure crowding as an exposure over time. In other words, to quantify the total exposure to high or low crowding during each week. We accomplish this by first determining the 95th and 25th percentile of the NEDOX values for each year of the study. The reason we determined percentiles separately for each year was to account for the expected long-term trend of increasing crowding over this six-year span. Next, we measured the NEDOX every 15 minutes throughout the study period. We calculated the fraction of time the NEDOX exceeded the 95th percentile during each week which became our measure of high crowding for a given week. We calculated the fraction of time the NEDOX was below the 25th percentile, and this was our measure of low crowding. Our primary data analysis consisted of fitting a Poisson regression model. The outcome measure of interest was the number of known errors that occurred during each week. The independent variables were the fractions of high and low crowding during the week, 
then we adjusted for weekly volume and acuity by including as covariates the number of patients within each ESI acuity level. We also conducted a number of sensitivity analyses. First, we varied the percentile thresholds of the NEDOCs that were used to define the fraction of high crowding and low crowding. Second, we described crowding as the fraction of time each week that the NEDOCs fell within published color-coded ranges such as green, red, or black. Third, as an alternative to measuring crowding using thresholds, we calculated the weekly mean and standard deviation of the NEDOCs. In each sensitivity analysis, we refitted Poisson regression models by substituting each of these alternative crowding measures. For the second and third sensitivity analyses, we added the year as an indicator variable to account for long-term trends of increasing crowding. During the six-year study period, there were a total of 1,111 referrals documented in the MERS database. By adjudication through the QA process, an error was found to have occurred in 45% of those cases. This gave a rate of approximately 1.6 errors occurring per week. The annual ED volume rose from roughly 46,000 in 2012 to 55,000 in 2017, and over the same time interval, the mean NEDOC scores rose accordingly. We fit a Poisson regression model with the number of known errors per week as the outcome measure. This analysis did not reveal any association between the rate of medical errors and exposure to high crowding or low crowding. The weekly volume of ESI level 2 patients was associated with increasing error rates. There also appeared to be trends toward decreasing error rates as weekly ESI level 1 and level 5 volumes increased. The sensitivity analysis showed similar findings when varying the percentile thresholds of the NEDOCs used to define high and low crowding. The results were unchanged when measuring crowding with the published color-coded ranges for the NEDOCs. Lastly, the weekly mean NEDOCs values did not associate with the rate of errors. However, increasing standard deviations of the NEDOCs were associated with increasing rates of errors, an unanticipated finding that may warrant further thought. This research project had a couple of limitations that are worth noting. First, it's possible that our QA process did not identify all medical errors that occurred during the study period. It is designed to be robust within practical limits, however. Cases may be referred to our QA process through numerous methods, and administrative review processes exist at both the departmental level and hospital level to detect incidents warning referral. Also, our safety culture is designed to acknowledge and mitigate the human factors that can otherwise deter voluntary self-referral. Second, although the NEDOX has been validated in diverse settings, there is no universally accepted way to measure ED crowding, so it's possible that repeating this analysis with alternative ED crowding metrics may yield different results. In conclusion, this study did not demonstrate an association between the rate of medical errors and ED crowding as measured by the NEDOX. The rate of medical errors increased as the weekly volume of ESI level 2 patients increased, and it appears that high variability in crowding may be associated with increased errors as well. In future work, we will try to replicate this analysis at the other hospital where we also provide emergency care, and we will consider additional sensitivity analyses to determine whether these findings are consistent when using different ED crowding metrics. That concludes this presentation, and thank you for watching.